Greetings, everybody, and welcome to Live from the She Shack. My name is Donna, and I'm coming to you today from Pierce, South Dakota, located on the beautiful Missouri River. Today is April 5th. It's about 78 degrees and sunny outside, a little bit windy. You can see the river flowing behind me. And I thought today I would share with you my 2020 finishes. I had several finishes that I framed couple that I made into strawberries and then some other projects that are not cross stitching that I thought would be fun to share. So the first project that I did was Spring Delivery with Brenda, from Brenda Gervais and I used the called for um, threads and fibers on this. This is on 36 count velt with the called for threads. This picture I put in my she shack so I chose a rustic frame. I think it, it turned out really fun. This was a really quick stitch. This probably took about three days to stitch. But that's Brenda Gervais Spring Delivery. The next project I did was Deer Heart by Kathy Barrick. And you've seen this unframed, but I really do like this project. I, I really like the colors on this. This is just my style. And this was not a hard stitch either. This was a lot of solid filling in and just a lot of fun colors to work with. This is done, I believe I did this on Feldspar and this is done with NPI silk, the called for silks on this. And all again all of these I did frame by myself. I do get my frames from Hobby Lobby. They do a nice job of building the frames and I thought this frame was perfect for this project. This is one of the favorite ones that I think I've done. I just really like the colors, the composition of this piece. It's just a beautiful piece. My next project that I did, and I probably finished this one in March of 2020. This one is another Kathy Barrick, and this is Fiona and Edward. And as soon as I saw the red horse, I just had to stitch this again. She has a knack for that composition and those great colors together. It's just a really fun project. This one I did have help picking out this frame. Most of my frames I do have help from my friend Jean and my sister Vicki. And this one I chose a kind of metallic red, but it really does suit this, this picture. So this is Fiona and Edward by Kathy Barrick. Isn't that a horse? Just gorgeous. I just love that horse. This again was done on, this was I believe was done on Picture This Plus Bramble and this was done with silks and, yeah sorry this was done with silk. The horse I did change the silk color. I know it's a Gloriana. Can't remember the color right now but I will put the color name on the screen. It just really made that horse with that variegation in there. That's Fiona and Edward by Kathy Barrick. There is a theme here. Here's another. Um, this one is actually a carriage house sampling, but it was designed by Kathy Barrick. And this is Black Horse Inn. This one I finished at the very beginning of 2020. Took me a little while to frame. But it's also a great project. I hope you can see the color of this blue frame. It's kind of a rustic blue frame. But I thought it really worked with this piece. I just love this strawberry. Pineapple. I really love this pineapple right here in the bird. The blues are just beautiful. I think that's probably why I'm drawn to some of these is that aqua e blue is just gorgeous. This is Black Horse Inn by Carriage House Samplings. This next piece I did also stitch with my friend Jean. We actually started this piece with Lisa Smith 
university two years ago in May, and we picked random um, classic color works, Belsois silks. We all picked our own linen, and we were going to compare notes at the end. So Jean and I did finish this project. Lisa, if you haven't finished this project, I'd love to see your completed project. This is your grand old flag, and this was a super, super fun project to stitch. The house is huge, but building that house was a really good time. I really did enjoy that. This one, I couldn't be more pleased of how this turned out. This one I chose to use a uh, silk weaver material. It's called Autumn Fields, and it's probably my favorite linen of all times, the colors, and it's just a fabulous piece of linen. And I found this really cool frame. Show you the frame first. And there's the house. It's amazing as Jean and I stitch things and then frame them. We'll frame them in a completely different frame, even if we choose the same linen. In this particular piece, we both used this Autumn Fields from Silk Weaver. The piece that she used, however, was a lot lighter than the piece that I used. And they look completely different with different frames. But this was a really fun stitch and it's absolutely beautiful. I just really like this. I, I, when I stitch at night, I look at this piece and I just love it. Very patriotic. Your grand old flag by Samplers Not Forgotten. This next one is the Country Horse Holiday by Artful Offerings. And I did modify my piece a little bit. I bought this pattern from Country Sampler in Spring Green and so I did their conversion on that. And then I chose to put a lead rope on my horse right in this area. Just something different. So there's his lead rope. I just, actually I just braided it. And I thought it just added some fun to it. The frame is kind of antique-ish. But fabulous colors. This again was a really quick and easy stitch. And I know a lot of people did this. Michelle Farm Girl was the first to enable all of us, I believe, on this piece. So thank you, Michelle, because I love it. Horse Country Holiday by Artful Offerings with a spring green conversion. And I do not know what this linen is. I do I can't remember what the linen is. But a great piece. This next piece is again a piece of I got this piece of linen from Michelle Rudy at the Midwest Stitching Retreat. Oh, I think probably two and a half years ago. She had dyed this piece of, fat, of linen and did not like it. And I snatched it up and waited and waited and waited and found something that I liked. This is Witchy Tea Time by The Primitive Hair. I did use color and cotton um, threads on this. Again, if anybody wants to know, just ask me. I can look it up. I can't remember at the moment. And it just... I just love it. I think that this piece was meant for this piece of material. This design was meant for this piece of material. And as you can tell, there's a theme here with my frames. I like ornate, chunky frames. But this one I thought turned out awesome too. Witchy Tea Time by The Primitive Hair. The next piece was uh, Stony Creek and I tried to find the magazine and I just could not find it. This one is from probably I would guess a September or October issue. It's probably quite old. I know it's called A Great Big Owl and I had had this one finished. I just had not FFO'd it. I hadn't done the final finish on it. This is a mystery piece of linen I did pick it up when I went to stitching at the beach, so I bought it from Amy at Down Sunshine Lane. 
And again, sometimes it's hard when you get a piece of hand dyed fabric. It seems really busy. So you have to find, or I have to find just the right pattern that will bring out the beauty of that piece. And this, I think that this did the trick. I think the placement of the pattern, how it ended up on here with the lighter here and the, the blue over here, I think it just really brought it all together. So this is a Stony Creek, a great big owl. This was done with DMC threads. This was my, I believe only what, what I, I guess I would consider a true sampler, um, a reproduction sampler. And this is Maria Davis, 1823. And I think in my first floss tube video, I mentioned that I like this one because it's from Bangor, Maine, and my favorite author is Stephen King. So I kind of like to think that uh, Stephen King lives in my sampler. So this is Maria Davis. Make sure I don't put it upside down. And this is on a piece of, so this, this frame is pretty thick. This was done on a piece of material that I hand dyed myself. I actually used RIT tan dye, powdered tan dye. And if you dye with RIT dyes, you know that not all of the granules are the same color. So even though I thought I was getting a tan color, you see the blues and the reds and the different variations here. I've got that, that look came through because I um, use ice, big chunks of ice, and then I just sprinkle the powder over the top. And as it melts, those crystals release all this different color. And I thought it was just really fun. On this one also, I did um, do different stitches on, I just had a complete loss of word there. They are eyelet stitches. There you go, eyelet stitches on the DFL, my initials on this one. This last one I actually started in, oh, I think probably October of 2020. And you know how it is, you working on your projects and then something catches your eye and you have to put everything else down and do it immediately. And I'm gonna actually take this pattern out of, out of the bag. This is La Di Da, Love Abide. Now I do sometimes not stitch all the elements that the designer has. In this case, I left off these blackbirds for no particular reason, but the piece of linen that I chose, I thought it just showed, I thought the way the linen looked without the birds on there made it look really, I guess I don't know what the word is, it makes it look very open, it makes the sky look very big, and I, I really liked how it turned out, so I chose not to stitch the birds. Although it would have been amazing with the birds too. I also really like what this sampler says. It says, in our house, let love abide and bless all those who step inside. So this is la di da, let love abide. This one's a pretty big one. I honestly can't remember what linen it is. This may be lentil. Can't quite remember. But I just like the way the, it's not showing very true. The it, I believe it's lentil. The green colors that are in this area of the sky. I just really loved it just the way it was. I really like La Di Da patterns also. She has amazing patterns from recent to the very beginning of her time of designing. So this is one of her newer patterns. And my next, my next finish is one of her very first patterns. And it's kind of hard to find, but this is Let Love Abide. Again, this is a 
Hobby Lobby frame. It's sometimes hard to... It's got a nice black finish on it. It just... I just really liked it. This was stitched all with DMC. Sometimes you forget the beauty of plain DMC. I get stitching with either silks or hand dyes. And then I go back to a plain DMC and fall in love with those colors again. I mean, look at this cool tree. These are dark gray leaves, brown branches. It's the colors. It is just gorgeous. Probably one of my other favorites that I finished this year. That's la di da, lava bye. My next la di da is an old one. This was, this is from 2002. Boy, I'm old. I used to, 2002 shouldn't seem that long ago, but that was almost 20 years ago. 19 years ago. This is Rooster. And this piece of material I actually bought. I don't remember who I purchased this from, but they had a piece of hand dyed material. And it was the first time in the first project that I even knew what hand dyed material was. So I was pretty excited about that. And I remember them telling me that was the last piece they had and did I want it? And I said, sure, why not? Let's do it. And I really like the way he turned out. I'll show you a close up of him because he's this amazing polka dotted rooster. The colors, amazing. Again, I chose to put him in a super chunky frame. That's a, that's a true color. Rooster by La Di Da. Those, I believe, are, are my framed finishes. I'm going to get rid of some of these. The other thing I did was I decided that I wanted to learn how to do a strawberry. Hold that thought. I do have one more finish. I apologize. I forgot about this one. This was a gift from a friend, and it was at the time a uh, club kit, I think with R&R &R Reproductions. And this is Plum Street's Hurt Not the Earth. And I just, the saying on this again was, is really neat. Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees. And it's just a sweet little, sweet little sampler. I'm going to have to hold something up. Let me see if I have something here that we can hold up behind that. Never have anything when you need it. That's a little better. This I actually have the frame for, but it's a metal frame that you have to construct. And so it was a little difficult to get my padding and the frame in there. And just when I thought I had it perfect, and started to tighten down the frame. I lost my grip. It got a little bit loosened, so I need to redo this. But this is Hurt Not the Earth by Plum Street. Very springy project for me. I'm actually going to, before I show you my other finishes, I'm going to show you what I've been working on. Why not? So again, my friend Jean and I like to work on different projects together. And we decided that anytime we travel this year, if she goes somewhere even for a couple days or I do, we'll just pick a project and we'll just keep going. Well, I have been on kind of a strawberry roll. So this is the second project. The first one I've already fully finished, but this is the second project that we're working on. And I'm not quite done yet. Jean is finished with hers, but I'm a little bit slow stitching. This is... St. Nick's Berry by Erica Michaels. And here's the colors. The floss that goes with it. So I did not have 
the actual colors for the pattern, so I just picked things that were close. I'll show you where I'm at. Oops. This is being stitched on a 40 count Ren by Picturebook Plus. This again is the palette of colors. Jean has finished him and he is super, super cool. He looks really great. So I need to get busy and stitch on that one and finish that one. Since I talked to you last, which I think has been about a month ago, I did work on one of my Kathy Barracks. This is Garden Glade. I'll show you the pattern. So last time, I think I had not completed any of this part down here. I think this is mostly the area I've been working in. It's filling in the bottom. She is being stitched on a 40 count metal rue. Too many things. Let's get this a bit. So she's coming along. I'm hoping to finish her in the next week or so. This is solid stitching down here though. This whole this whole bottom part is solid stitching. And what's going to happen is I'm going to run out of one of my colors. I'm going to run out of the color of the rabbit and I'm going to be very close on the red. So hopefully I'll have enough, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to be ordering some more silk. This is being done with the call for silk. But I really Love that color combination. Can't wait to finish her and get her framed and up on my wall. When I filmed my whip braid in last month's floss tube video, I did forget one project that I had started. And it's because I had it in my house and I was stitching on it. And I had so many other projects that just slipped my mind. But it's one of those projects that you get and you want to start stitching. And you keep looking at it and you keep not starting it. Until one day you say it's time. And for me, it was time in January to start this project. This is Rosewood Manor Leeds House Sampler. I haven't seen very many people stitching this. I know Lisa Smith has this pattern, but I don't recall anybody else having this. This calls for sulky cotton petite threads. I had never used them before. I had never even heard of them. But they're a 12 weight, so they're equivalent to two strands of regular DMC. And that's important because this pattern is stitched on a 32 count. Now traditionally, I use two strands when I work on 32 count to get the coverage. And most projects that I stitch on 32 count would be my Mirabilia's. So I'm really enjoying the one strand over two linen threads on this project. And this is what it looks like. So it's got some really vibrant colors. And it's a really fast stitch. This is being done on 32 count Ancient by Picture This Plus. One of my favorite linens. This particular piece has got some exceptionally cool patterns to it. And I thought that it would look fantastic on this. So this is, once you get the rhythm of one of these sides of this middle mandala done, you can pretty much just copy it. And so it goes really fast. So it's an easy, relaxing stitch without a lot of counting. So that is Leeds House Sampler by Rosewood Manor. And I really do like her as a designer too. She's got some great projects. I have a couple more. I think I'll make a, another video of just haul that I got from last year. And I picked up several of her patterns that are, that are really cool too. So that's Leeds House Sampler 
this will be one that I work on and hopefully can finish probably by May if I'm lucky. So that's something I'm working on. So before I go any further, I thought I would just show you some of the project bags that my sister and I make and sell in our Etsy store. So what we do is we actually quilt. My sister is a long arm quilter. She's got a Gamel Elevate and she's a long arm quilter. So she'll quilt the fabric. This one is Kitty's and it says Meow on it. And then she'll make the project bags. And she made these specific for me or the design that I liked because when I put my sampler in here, and I'll just load this back in, I can see the picture and see what I have inside there. So it's easy for me to use this way. And I also used DAP kits, and I'll show you one of those in a minute, which I call Donna's Accessory Pouch. And in there I put my thread, the scissors, maybe some hand lotion, uh, extra needles, all of my little accessories that I need, I usually put them in there. And it's nice because then it'll sit down here and you won't be able to see it through the whole plastic and it kind of hides in the down part there. These guys are maybe, I think, I'm, I think they're like 11 by 14s, but they're big enough so you can get most patterns in there and you can really put a lot of stuff in there. So that's one of our project bags. Let's talk strawberries. I have become obsessed with cross-stitch strawberries. And there are so many great ones out there. I did show you one that I'm working on right now, which is the Erica Michaels um, Santa Claus. But prior to that, I did stitch a bigger strawberry. So a few years ago, I saw this strawberry somewhere and I could not remember the name of this pattern. It drove me crazy for a long time. And then I purchased this book, The Winds of Autumn. And there's the strawberry. But when you look at this picture, you're not really sure how big that strawberry is. So when I saw this pattern, I thought that's probably going to be quite a large strawberry. Here he is right here. And as you're stitching along, you don't get the true um, perception of how big the strawberry is going to be. So I started this. Again, my friend Jean and I stitched this one. We picked different materials, linens. We used it. We used DMC, I used two hand dies along with my DMC, and then we stitched it and then we compared again at the end. And I think that this turned out really cool. So just for size, that's how big this strawberry is. I like to say he's a big two pounder. I did fill him with rice and then polyfill on the top. And I did do it with rice so that I could shape him, ply him a little bit. Make sure he's a good shape. This is the first strawberry I, I have ever made. And I, I know how to sew, but I'm not an expert seamstress, and this was really easy to sew. They gave great instructions, and I put this together in an afternoon. So I'm going to show you the whole strawberry. This green is hand-dyed, a hand-dyed thread, and the bird himself is a hand-dyed thread, and the rest are DMC. And he was a fast stitch and he was a really fun stitch. I did make, I guess I won't call it a mistake, when I was reading the pattern. So when I stitch, I my patterns, I make a photocopy of them and then I tape them together so that it's one big pattern. But for some reason, I missed the bottom border down here. And I'd already had him sewed together when I realized that I'd forgotten that. So he's unique to me. I did put my initial on here, and I did put 2021 on here, the present year. So here is, and I believe I just told you the name of him, and he is called the First Winds of Autumn. So after you stuff them, you take some velveteen, and I chose to use three different colors of velveteen. They tell you how to make the little stem. And then you just lay out 10 of these leaves and attach them. Again, I wanted to do a little different color. So I used some different colors of that. But I think he turned out really cool. I really like it. I would encourage anybody, if you want to make a strawberry and don't think you can, you can. It's easy to follow the instructions and it's just really cool. Probably weighs two pounds. He is again filled with rice and polyfill. 
and he's the first strawberry that I'm going to show you. So I had some other strawberries finished, and after I discovered I could finish him, I figured I can do the rest of them. So here are my other strawberries that I finished. So many of you have seen Deck the Halls. This is a couple years old. I have stitched just four of the six of these strawberries. And let's see if I can tell you the names as I go. So the first one is called It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. And this one had the, these are Blackbird again. And this actually had the finishing instructions and it told you the lace to buy at Hobby Lobby. I did not tack it down yet. You can see he's kind of fine at the top there. Let's see if I can show this a little better. And I just arbitrarily chose a piece of ribbon that I thought coordinated with the strawberry. So they're all different. Let me get something better to hold behind there so we can see that a little bit better. There we go. I'll put this across my lap. So there's, I don't know, it's probably not easy to show these. So there's this strawberry. That one's called It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. The next one is a Christmas Pelican. He may be called Christmas Pelican. Again, I this was I was experimenting with ribbon tops. This guy's got a tinier ribbon top. But he's a cute little pelican. I'm gonna look up the names of these other ones. That one is called Christmas Visitor. The next one I did was this one's called From Me to Thee. And this one's just a little different ribbon also. And again, this lace was what they called for. I probably will tack them down a little bit so it doesn't show that top so much. It doesn't show my good sewing underneath there. And then the last one that I have stitched is called On the First Day of Christmas. And here's the partridge in the pear tree. So just fun little strawberries. And I um, chose to put them on this little tray like this. That I picked up at Hobby Lobby. So they just lay in there. And again, I've got two more in this series to do, but I really have been enjoying working on these strawberries. I have one more project to show you, and then I'm going to show you some non cross stitching stuff. So, in anticipation of us finishing the Strawberry by Erica Michaels, the Santa Claus. We decided, Jean and I decided that our next project was going to be something a little different. And I had been looking at this for a long time. And I purchased this when we went to the Midwest Stitching Retreat in October in Amana, Iowa. We stopped by Shanty Stitchers located in Beersford, South Dakota. And if you're in the general vicinity and you're able to get there, they don't just have cross stitch stuff, but they also have quilting material. And Phenomenal shop, the sh phenomenal shop owner, very friendly, very nice. We really enjoyed it. So it's called Shanty Stitchers in Beersford, South Dakota, which is located very close to the South Dakota, Iowa, Minnesota border. And this is Plum Street Nightshade, Nightshade Bird, and the drum, and the color of the bird, and the little tomato on top. Just very cool. So this one. The color that I chose to work this one on is Grandpa's Sleeve. Grandpa's Sleeve by X Jew Designs. He's going to be a 40 count. He's got a little bit of yellow through him. 
but I thought that would be a really fun color to stitch this bird on because look at these flosses. These are beautiful colors. Really stunning colors. I think this is the, the bird right here. This light color right there, that peachy color. Just beautiful. So I'm looking forward to getting this one started. So that's the incentive for me to finish my Santa and then get this one started because I looked at the pattern on this one and it's super simple. Um, very easy to stitch. Shouldn't take probably a weekend to do. So that is all I have for cross stitching. But I wanted to show you another project that I worked on that I was extremely proud of in 2020. So I stitch with a group of, there's four of us that actually cross stitch and we've been cross stitching together for, I'm going to guess probably 10 years, all four of us, but three of us have been stitching together for almost 25 years. And we go on a little retreat, just the four of us, and now we have two other members who are my sister and her friend Holly, who are both quilters because all but two of our group now has transitioned to being quilters and cross stitchers. And I'm headed down the quilt road myself but we always go away. We try to go away twice a year. It doesn't always happen. But when we do, we've just started a kind of tradition that we kind of like to make something for each other or give each other a little gift or just, you know, do a fun treat for our little time away stitching and quilting. So this year, my sister and I were in a quilt shop and I saw this material. I was thinking, what could I do for the girls? What would be a good theme? And I came across this material and I honestly knew immediately when I saw that, that this is what I was going to do. So what I did was I made everybody project bags and dap kits. Now I showed you our regular project bags with the vinyl in them, but this particular um, bag we call a fat bottom bag. And it's because it's got a seam in it and it's got a fat bottom. But I started, I quilted this material. And I quilted it on my sister's Elevate long arm quilting machine. And then I sewed everybody a project bag, a fat bottom project bag. Everybody had a different um, border up here. Everybody's was a unique color. And I just took a combination of everybody's. So I was pretty proud of myself because I put in all the zippers and it wasn't as hard as I thought it was. So I got pretty good at that. But this is what the inside looks like. And as you can see, it can store quite a bit of stuff in there. Make it the easy way. I can store quite a bit of stuff in there. I have a, a dap kit in there. I have a pair of bifocals. I've got linen. I have a project in here. But I wanted to make a dap kit that matched it also. So this is the size of the dap kit. So it's a little smaller. I could probably fit in this little guy. I could probably fit like this Plum Street would go in there perfect. So you can use him for a little sampler and he fits in there perfect. So it's kind of versatile, but I always like to have a matching dap kit with my bag. So this was my big project. I made, I think seven full size bags and six of the dap kits. And I think I used up almost all of the material perfectly. So pretty proud of myself for doing start to finish. When I say start, I mean I pin all the material on a long arm quilting machine, which can be tricky. Had to put the batting between it, started and finished the whole thing by myself. So those are fat bottom bags and a dap kit. And this beautiful cardinal material. So that was one of my, the first thing I did on the long arm machine. Now, I should say that I have done other things on the long arm quilting machine, most of our quilting bags. My main job is to actually quilt the material and we quilt one to two yards at a time. So we get a lot of unique patterns. But my sister's been encouraging me to play with the machine more and to try the machine more. So this next project, I can't claim that I sewed this together. My sister sewed this together. And then I put it on the machine and I quilted this. 
So my sister's been talking about making me a Christmas quilt. And she knows what my favorite colors are. So the other thing my sister does uh, quilting, she's got a little business. And most of her quilts have minky on the back. And minky is super soft right there. It's a better two color. So if you've never used minky, you should try it. It's wonderful. I sleep with a minky quilt every night. So this is the back of the quilt. This I just did at the weekend prior to Easter. My sister, again, did stitch all this fabric together and then I put it on the long arm machine and quilted it. So I will see if I can show you a good part is. Obviously, I still have to bind it and it will be the first time I've ever bound a quilt before. So we'll try to get some of this excess out of there so you can see the pattern. Obviously, it's a little hard to see. I didn't realize how big this was. But my palette of colors, super fun fabrics. And I just chose a bigger, kind of a paisley design on this. So when I get that all bound, I will show that again. But that was my... My little quilting project that I worked on. And I really do, I really did enjoy doing that. So one of the other hobbies that I have is crocheting. And I'm not a very good crocheter, but I can do pretty simple things. And I found a pattern in a Better Homes and Guard magazine to make cross stitch covers for glass ornaments. And this is what they look like. So this is pretty basic. It probably took me about an hour to crochet this. This is just crochet cotton from Hobby Lobby that comes in a variety of different colors and patterns. So you just crochet until you get about an inch down. You flip the glass ball inside and then you crochet it all the way at the top and it locks it in place. We have a visitor coming by. So it's absolutely beautiful here in South Dakota today. It's 78 degrees out there. It's Katie. Move out of the way so you can see her. Katie Cat. Katie. She likes to go out this time of night. She likes to talk to the birds. The birds are talking to her right now. So she likes to go roam. It is still a real, really beautiful evening out. So, so that was one of the the first ones I made. Here's just another example of the same pattern, just a different color. And again, these are really fast and easy, and and I do get in the mood to do different things, crochet, or sometimes I like to do a little hardinger. Uh, sometimes I like to do a little bit of sewing. So this is something fun that you can make for your Christmas tree. This one is just a little bit smaller size. There's two different sizes. And then the second pattern that was in the magazine was this one. I don't know what you call this design. I'm sure that the crocheters out there are probably yelling out the name of it, but had a little open pattern to it. I thought that was really fun. Again, you crocheted about to here, flip that glass ball in, and then crochet up at the top. And this one I actually tried for the first time two different colors where I had to join them together, and it came out pretty good. So that's just something fun to do with crochet thread to make Christmas tree ornaments. Now the last thing that I'm going to show you today is, and I appreciate you hanging with me through this whole time, is a long time ago, my sister, who is very crafty, and maybe someday she'll actually appear with me on my Floss Tube channel, made me a Christmas stocking. I consider this 
um, wool felting because the front of the stocking is all hand pieced and then all hand stitched and all made with wool. So this is a Christmas stocking that she made for me. You can see all the all the beads, all the little trees that she put on there. Little moose. So just any kind of fun buttons or ornaments that you could put on there. That guy's a little bear with a little hat on. And the back side is just a plain piece of wool. I believe this was probably a suit jacket or trousers. My sister's really good about going to thrift stores and finding old pieces of felt or wool to make things with. And then she lined it with this beautiful dark blue velvet and did some beautiful hand stitching on the top. So that was something that my sister made for me. So I liked it so much that I made one for my boyfriend. So this is the one that I actually made. And I tried to keep it fairly consistent with mine. Tried to keep the tree theme. Tried to make it a little bit more masculine. Put all kinds of little cool buttons on there. Little trinkets, little beads. Use some metallic thread to make some stars. And then I pieced together, this was either somebody's skirt or possibly a suit jacket. Now it's the back of a stocking. So there again, there's all kinds of fun things that you can find at antique stores or secondhand stores. And again, I just lined it with velvet. So, I mean, they're pretty big. Um, you can put a lot of stuff in there. But that's just a fun, you can see that mine's obviously not as good as my sister's. I didn't quite get the opening right. But something fun that you can do with your scraps of wool from your felt wooling that you can make into a fun Christmas tree stocking. Not Christmas tree stocking, Christmas stocking. It's been a long day. Thank you for watching from Donna and Katie, live from the She Shack. Have a great evening, everybody.